Amen. That was a long words of God, right? We finished it. Okay, so today, today, main topic is what? We heard parables of what? Heaven. Heaven. From Jesus Christ. Jesus gave the parables those Israelites, including us today, right? So through these parables, Jesus was instructing us on how we get the kingdom of heaven. Does anybody know how to reach kingdom of heaven? Young one knows. How? What's that? Narrow path. Wow. 좁은 문 in Korean. Narrow path. You are right. So let's, let's get to know how we make it to the narrow path. At the end of the narrow path, what's there? Ah, there's another one. Small. Wow, new Jerusalem kingdom. Before that, we have narrow gate. Narrow gate, right? Young one remembers everything that I, you know, preached right before. <laughs> narrow gate. What, young one? What is the narrow gate then? Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Oh my God, He knows. He knows everything. Wow, I'm so surprised. Actually, when I prepare the you know, sermon, I I usually you know targeting to the low level who is young one, and he knows everything. I'm so happy, young one. Give a big applause to him. Good, good. So today, I wanna you know I want you to hear today's message, you know, uh, like a well-driven nail in your heart about. How can we get to the heaven, right? So you have heard about the word heaven so many times, right? Uh, tears in heaven, something like that. There's a song outside, right? Eric Clapton, something, right? And heaven, we use this word in our daily lives. But what does it mean to you? Does it mean anything to you? It's too far away, you think, from you? It is a place where you want to be eventually, or when you die, something like that, you may imagine like that, right? Or for somebody, the name heaven is a place where you dreamed of, you know, even they are living in this harsh, you know, world. But for somebody, it could be some exotic, you know, vacation places, right? And when, when they see it, oh, this is heaven, right? Is that real heaven then? No, heaven is not, you know, as bad as like that, right? <laughs> like in the calendar pictures? No, that's not heaven yet. Okay, so everybody has their own and your, his and her own picture or, or, or image of heaven, right? But, but you know, I'm going to tell you what Bible is describing about the heaven. Through the parables, right? So before Jesus came to this world, like who came to before him to wait for Jesus, right? Who was it? John the Baptist. When, when he uh, started his public life, he proclaimed that what? Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Right? He said that. Jesus also, you know, gave us exactly the same phrase, saying that, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some tra translations said at hand. Some translations um, says near, something like that. Today's uh, Bible verse, anyway, from uh, NASB, which is, uh, you know, closer to the Old Greek. You know? So sometimes I'm going to use NASB. Uh, new American Standard Version, something like that. Anyway, Jesus said exactly the same thing when he started his public life. And what does he mean by the kingdom of heaven is at hand or near? That means the kingdom of heaven is not here yet. Okay? But 
it is coming, coming very soon to you. That's what he meant. On the other hand, it means there are some steps, steps that you have to do before you get a hold of the heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. Are you guys just sleeping? Or? Okay, amen. <laughs> Please say amen. That makes me, okay. That makes me, you know, energetic and make me happy, okay? So today, I'm going to give you specific ways to have the kingdom of heaven in, in, in through parables. How many parables did he give today? Ah, did I write that? Okay. Seven parables from Jesus Christ. So in these days, there are, you know, so many testimonies. Somebody said, oh, you know what? I, I went to heaven, you know, the other day, and then I saw somebody in the hell, and somebody was in heaven, something like that, right? So there are so many testimonies who saw heaven, or somebody went to heaven, and they talk about the details of heaven, but please do not spoil your concept of heaven with that kinds of, you know, incorrect informations. But before that, before we have an uh, image of heaven or in our mind, we have to have right message from Bible, from Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So Jesus used parables when he was talking about heaven. And why did he use parables? Why did he have to use the first purpose is that, did I write that down? Okay. <laughs> okay. The first purpose was that it could be hidden for some people. And the second purpose is, you know, uh, using by parables, you know, uh, those who understand his sermon is going to give very clear and vivid lessons those who had ears to hear. Amen? And so Jesus said, you know, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Okay, what does that mean? It depends on, so, okay, if you, today, if you do not understand, you may think you are why I'm wise enough, you know, I don't need your descriptions, or I'm smart enough, something like that, please change your mind and have mind like a, an infant, okay, that you can get the image of, the right image of the heaven, okay? So it depends on state of your mind. If you think you are wise and the learned, then you may not get, get these lessons. Or but if you are like an infant, then you can get to know the true meaning of heaven. So please have humble mind like Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And you need to have hungry for truth before God. So are you ready? Are you guys ready? Tim, are you ready? Okay, so he, he nodded his head, so he is ready, okay? So then I will start giving you the lessons how to... Have heaven in your life. Okay? The first parable is parable of what? Sower. Sower. This is the most important parable of all, all the seven parables. The seven parables are connected to each other. So the level of understanding is getting, getting up. So getting higher. So you have to focus on that. And the last parable is about the Net, drag net. They cut the f cut fish and then they separated good ones, wicked ones, and righteous ones, and, and so on, right? The first thing that you should know is heaven is not achievable by ourselves, according to the parable of the sower. What did I say? You 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 cannot reach to heaven by yourself, even though you meditate thousand years, if you can live, okay? Even though you meditate about the heaven thousand years, like somebody in India, you know, they, they close their eyes and then, you know, sit, sit down on a rock and then they meditate. Do you think they, they will get to the heaven? No, okay? You cannot 
get to know it by yourself. Even though you have, you have been helping others many years at the charities, or even though you have triple PhD you know, degrees, you cannot get to know it. Like those essential, you know, do you take vitamins? Hyun Jung, you know, I know Hyun Jung Sonsengnim takes vitamins, and I take vitamin C. Why do we take the vitamins? Because we cannot, our body cannot make those substances, right? Then we have to take it from outside, right? It is something like that. So what today's parables, you know, What's coming from outside to us, our field of our heart? What was it? They were seas, right? Seas. What, what are these seas? Yes, young one. What are the seas? Yes, words of God. The words of God should, should be scattered in our heart from outside. Right? Amen? Amen. So, the starting point of receiving the words of God is, is from whom? The God who is the creator of the universe. And now we have, have the first step toward the heaven. Okay, since you guys are here and listening the words of we already, you know, read the long, you know, passage, right? The word of the day. That means it, it is you already started the first step of to the heaven, right? So you are in a good place now. And when you have the seas in your heart, what can you do? Uh, you can water them, you know, you can take a good care of them. But just watering and basically watering and wait, right? You cannot, you cannot make it, you know, sprout or, you know, germinate, right? right? Then it, it, will, it will sprout and grow and bear fruits. Right? Once it has fruits, then it, it's good for us. Right? When you, have the, when you have the fruits, it's good for us. It means that there should be some steps and procedures to, to have the fruits. And this is, this is the you know, best case that we can imagine. Right? But in reality, once you have the seed of the God in your mind, there will be Big attacks from Satan. Right? Jesus described it today. It is another lesson from parable of the sower. You know, what kinds of attacks are we, are we getting once, you have, once we have the word of God, seed in our heart? According to the her- parable, yes. Young one? Yes, Satan does very bad things to take away the seed in our field of mind, right? So what kind of cases do we have? One is worldly worries that you have that blocks, you know, to grow the seed. And another one is rocky places, right? It means that you have so much of hurt and scars in your mind because it gives out, you know, pain in your heart. You cannot... You know, the seed of God, words, cannot grow at all, right? Another one is deceitfulness of wealth chokes the seed and it becomes unfruitful. What is the, you know, what, what are the three attacks again? One is worldly worries and your hurts and scars in your heart. Another one is desire of money. You know, I, I want to have money, 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 like, you know, crab in, you know, the character, character of crab in SpongeBob, right? <laughs> the owner of the restaurant, right? So that's not good, you know. Anyway, once you have, okay, luckily, once you have germinated seed, your seed started, you know, go, coming up in green stuff in it, right? And there will be, Next step of Satan's attack, which is described in parable of seed. While we are sleeping, or enemy comes and he scatters what? Seed, the seed of weed 
among the wheat, right? Right? So what happens is that when, when the wheat and, you know, wheat grow together, their roots are going to be mixed together, mingled together. The roots are mingled together. In case, you know, you cannot, uh, in that case, you cannot, you know, take them apart. Why? When you try to remove the, the root of the wheat, you will ruin the wheat, you know, root of the wheat. So, on top of this, another case is they look the same. You cannot distinguish which one is good one or which one is bad one. Okay, in, in this, okay, left one, left image, which one is wheat or which one is uh, the, the weed or barley? Yes, young one, which one is bad? Left one? Uh, the right, right side one. Next click. Okay, <laughs> the left one, left one is wheat, uh, wheat, middle one is wheat, the right side one is barley, okay? Can you differentiate them? Okay, if somebody, somebody gives, you, gives you a job, can you remove the wheat out of the field? No. <laughs> no, it's very hard to distinguish which one is wheat or which one is good crop. So, now you understand why, you know, Jesus said like this, right? When you try to remove the wheat, you may have a chance of removing good ones, our crop. So, what was Jesus' solution? Let them grow until the, until the harvest. Once, you, once they grow on, until the harvest, we know, we know how to separate them. Right? So with the wind, and, you know, they just blow away. The, the weed, weed, seed of the weed, it goes away. Then what they do? What they do after that? They gather together, burn it up. Right? So, so please, okay, the lesson of, of Jesus is, you know, in this parable was endure until the time for harvest. Amen? So final judgment would be coming from God. Amen? So that's our, our you know, um, gaining point at the time. So until then, we should, be, you sh we, we should endure the situation that we have, you know, in, in our daily lives, that we, we have so many problems around us. Please endure those situations until you have the final judgment from God. Amen? So the next parable is parable of mustard seed, okay? As you can see in the figure, it's a really little, tiny one. And what is the common characteristic of mustard seed? And another one is the parable of yeast. So they are the same. They have the same meaning. Uh, the characteristic is they are really small. And after you receive the seed of the good good soil in your mind and and you removed your you know the rocky stuff in your in your field of your heart and also you soften your you know your heart and then and then the seed grows and they give out give out plenty of fruits when you endure right so now it grows like a mustard seed and when it when it fully, you know, when it becomes fully grown, you know, uh, plant, it becomes larger than other garden plants, and it becomes a tree. Do you think it's going to be like a, you know, big tree? No? Okay. Maybe it, it is not as big as, big as big trees, but it, it becomes really big. Okay, next slide. See? Do you see? <laughs> this is mustard. Uh, it's kind of, you know, hard to see, but this is, there's a person, car, this is mustard. That, that can grow twice the height of the guy, right? It grows really, really big, right? It, it is from Israel. This guy is Israelite. And then next click. When they get together, you know, they can grow like this. You know, the, the bird in the air, they can, you know, hide there and take a rest like that, right? 
So what Jesus, you know, described was correct that, that we can see. Even though, you know, you keep a small word of God and then, and then you keep it and you abide by it, then it grows like this. The birds of the air can, can come in and they make a nest in the branches. Now, small words of God becomes big blessings in your, in your life and including the people around you. Amen? Amen. If you, are, uh, if you are keeping the small word of God, for example, I'm going to come every Sunday worship services, and you just decide it, and you just keep that in your heart. And if you are keep coming, even though this is, it seems to be a very small one, and eventually it's going to grow and like this mustard tree, right? So let's, okay. And when you reach this point, there will be another negative attack from Satan. So Satan never stops, okay? So this is why Jesus gave us the parable of East. When Jesus was mentioning East, you know, usually it's, it's got negative uh, meaning out of East. You remember the, you know, uh, Jesus was, you know, uh, be cautious about the, the east of Pharisees and Sadducees, right? So in that case, in Ma that was in Matthew 16, 11. So there would be some attacks from Satan at that point too. So you have to, you have to be very careful with the small stuffs that you already know that this is not, you know, this is, this, this small seed, Satan's seed, is not belonging to you know, heaven, but uh, belongs to God. So you have to remove it. Otherwise, it's going to grow like, like mustard seed, like that. So you have to remove it from the start. Amen? Amen. So these, okay, I gave you how many parables? Up to you? Four. Four parables. And the parable of what? Sore, right? Parable of? Okay, read. And parable of? Mustard seed. And parable of? Yeast, right? Four. These four parables are given out to public, okay? Uh, on a boat uh, at a lake. And what are the, uh, how many uh, parables do we have now? Three more. And four parables Jesus gave this to open the public, and the next three parables is given only to the disciples at the house. Okay? Uh, we read it. You know, in, in the scripture, it said it was given to the disciples, not to the public. And that, what, what do you feel like that? You know, why did he um, give these parables only to disciples? Because it has got higher, you know, meaning of the heaven. So it, you know, the normal people cannot take it. So if, even though you overcome, okay, the, f the four steps of the f from the four, first four parables, there will be another serious attacks, you know, uh, from the Satan. Uh, I'm going to talk about the next three, you know, uh, parables. So, and the preacher, you know, words are very fierce, very harsh. Sometimes it is hard to, it is hard to be here, but even after listening to the words of God, and there will be another attack when we try to keep the words of God in our daily lives. When you go back to your daily lives, even though you heard the words of God today, right now, it's going to be kind of hard to keep it, you know. Gaining the kingdom of heaven involves continuous battle against the evil spirits and Satan. Okay? Okay? So, I'm, I'm just, you, you, might, you may think that I'm uh, Cheji Sanim, he's, he's always talking about, you know, uh, attack from Satan and spiritual words. Okay? So, um, okay. But Jesus, now, that's why Jesus only gave this to his disciples. Okay, I want you to be that kind of level, okay? So 
They, in daily lives, what do we have, young one? Spiritual war. We have to fight against, okay? Okay, now we are moving into the fifth to seventh parables, and they are specifically given to disciples. And please have more attention, please, okay? Jonghyun, please, okay? Have more attention. These, these are parables of hidden treasure, okay? Parable of pearl. And those two have the same meanings, okay? What did they do in common, uh, common, you know, common thing to get the hidden treasure and the pearl? What, what did they do, you know, for the treasure and the precious pearl? They sold what? Everything that they had for what? To get the precious pearl and the, the treasure in the field, right? The, this guy actually bought the field anyway. So he sold everything that they, he had and to get the field or the pearl. So to gain the kingdom of heaven, then, then we have to sell everything that we have. Is it true? Do you, what do you think? To gain the heaven, to gain heaven, you have to sell everything that you have. Can you, can you sell your car <laughs> to get heaven? Okay, for example, like, it's, even it's not everything, right? Right? So, let me tell you again, you know, to gain heaven, we have to sell everything. This, that's what, what, is, what Bible is talking about as of now. But can you do it? Can you sell everything to gain heaven? No, we cannot do it. You know, we want to do it, but we cannot do it. You know, when Jesus was captured by the, by the soldiers uh, from the highest priest, and the older disciples went away, abandoned Jesus, right? You remember that scene, right? So what it means is we cannot, we cannot sell everything by our, ourselves. But there's a, only one person who sold everything. You know who, who that was? Yes, young one. Yes. Jesus sold everything for us. Jesus sold everything that, that belonged to him and to pay our sins. And Jesus gave up his body on the cross. And what did he gain again? He gained us. Amen? Like brides of Jesus Christ. Jesus gained all the people who believe, who believe in, in him. Amen? Amen. So now, how can he sell everything? Then, you know, anyway, we have to sell everything, you know, because that's, that's what Bible is talking about. This could be done by having the spirit of Jesus in us. And when the spirit, Holy Spirit allows us, then we can do this. Otherwise, you cannot sell everything that you have. Only God could do it through us when we take up the cross, our own cross, and follow, when we follow Jesus the way Jesus went to Kolkata, right? Then we can do this. Amen? Amen. Let's go back to the parable. And we need God's inspiration. And, and then... You know, we can understand what the Bible is trying to talk to us. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure, he, treasure with the hidden, you know, hidden treasure in the field. And the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant, merchant seeking for fine pearls. What, you know, it's got another meaning uh, in that. What does it mean by, you know, Jesus is, okay, what, what does it mean, you know? What does it mean to you? Like, who's the merchant and who's the treasure or the pearl? Can you, can you imagine that, you know? What does it mean, you know? And this is what I, what we, what I get, okay? Jesus found 
candidate of his prize as of now, when he found the treasure and pearl. Amen? Amen? Now it means Jesus, okay, that means when Jesus found us as a bride of Jesus Christ, Jesus is ready to sell everything for us. Amen. And it means that Jesus start he starts the process having to have you know this candidate as his bride of his his own bride. He starts this process. If you ask me who is the bride of Jesus then I would would like to say that you know it has been decided at the creation of the world before the creation of the world before God Christ, uh, he, before he created the earth and heaven, he already decided the prize of Jesus Christ. Amen? That those who will be saved eventually. So Paul described this uh, state as we have the treasure in our jars of clay. Okay? The same image of treasure in jars of clay was the ark of God. Remember, ark of God, we have things in it, right? And another image is Noah's ark. We have Noah and in the ark, right? And it also could be the you know, papyrus basket when the baby Moses was on it. And it's got the same, you know, image. Even though the, the field does not include the treasure, the normal field becomes the field with treasure when Jesus comes to our field of mind. Amen? Amen? Okay, when you think, I'm, I'm nothing, you know, I do not have treasure, but please invite Jesus Christ into your field of your mind, then your field becomes the field with treasure. Amen? Amen. So in verse, you know, Matthew 13, 44, when Jesus found the candidate of Jesus Christ, and what did he do? A man found this, and he's, again, he, he did it. He did the field. Okay, and then he he goes there to the owner and he bought the field. So who's gonna sell the field? You know, if the owner knows oh, there's a you know treasure in it, right? So what does that mean? It means you know there could be again Satan's attack for this. Even though God hides his prize when and Jesus and when Jesus was about to born. You know, what did King Herod do? He killed all the baby boys below two years old, right? There was Satan's attack. And we should know that the word is always against the bride of Jesus Christ. And, but you need to grow until you give birth another Jesus in you. Amen? Amen. Okay, the seventh parable is parable of the net. This is the final parable. Okay, this is the end, okay? We are getting to the end, okay? Are you happy? Okay. The so parable of net is now we all are in the net of God. I think uh, all, everybody in this sanctuary, we are all in the net of God, right? So God is telling us that they gather the fish, good fish into containers, but the bad they threw away. Right? Threw away to where? To the to the harness? To the world again. Okay? Let, let them leave whatever they want to do, you know. Just, you know, they, they just send away. And this means that we need to be selected as good ones that God wants to keep us in the in his container amen amen this is what will happen at the end of the world and at the at the great throne great white throne judgment right 
So God will keep righteous one into the new Jerusalem castle, but put wicked in the lake of fire. Amen? Amen? You got it? Okay, next slide. You will like it. What's that? Summary. Okay, I'm going to summarize, okay? The kingdom of heaven, it may not, you know, feel like a reality to you yet, but it's going to come eventually. So that's why I'm, I'm uh, giving you uh, this sermon, okay? The kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven starts from what? Receiving seeds from outside. We have to have seed of seed, uh, which is word of God, from outside. We cannot save ourselves. Remember that, okay? And then seeds are the word of, God, word of God into our heart, okay? The next one is to make the seed germinate, grow, and bear fruit. We have to have. We have to fight against Satan's attack. We have to fight against it. Usually in the form of, you know, it comes in the form of, uh, I don't like this sermon or it's so boring, I want to go home, things like that. You have to fight against it, against it. Or the Bible study is too boring, things like that. You have to fight against it, okay? And overcome the worries of the world and... Also, you, you, you are going to have weeds around you. You have to overcome. And the, there is there's going to be a strong effect of the yeast. You have to fight against it, okay? And for bride of Jesus Christ, try to give our, you know, everything to Jesus. But, you know, did I say you can do it or not? Okay, we cannot do it, but with the help of Holy Spirit, we can follow the way that Jesus went. Amen? Then we can give our everything. And please don't, you know, stop of your march to the heaven because there will be the final judgment at the end of the whole, whole universe. Amen? Amen. This is the word of, word of God. 